Interviewing for your first developer job is gonna be one of the most terrifying things that you will be doing. Why? Because you will be validated, okay? After months of hard work, after blood, sweat and tears, discipline, saying no to many things that you actually love doing, so you can sit in front of your computer and write code and build your portfolio and your applications and whatnot. Now you see if you know what you've done is actually worth it. If anyone sees value in you, most people will not make it through. Okay, but if you are willing to work through this process and learn and understand, you know how the job market works and whatnot, I believe that you'll be successful. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my best tips, the ones that I'm going to give to my students, the ones that I'm already giving to my students, and I think these uh, tips will help you massively. Okay. So before I get into it, a quick pitch. If you need coaching and if you want to learn code as fast as possible, apply for a free consultation call. That's the first link in the description. And if you want to check out the program before you join, that's the second link in the description. You can see our community, you can see our projects, you can see the live calls that I'm running with my clients uh, because I believe in transparency and I want you to see what you get before you pay, right? And um, I want this to be so different and so much better than anything out there. The free stuff that I have in there for you, you have a couple of free courses. Those are so good, you'll feel stupid not getting to the full mentorship. Again, if you wanna apply, that's the first link. If you wanna check out the program, that's the second link. So now let's get into the video. I want you to understand something. So getting a dev job, it's pretty much like dating. It's very toxic, acid, dating is nowadays okay so everyone is kind of playing a game of we don't need you but we kind of want you and you need to remove all your feelings from this process this is so important i have seen people you know getting a, an interview then they went to the interview they felt like they got the job and whatnot and they got rejected and they stopped applying if you feel like an interview is going well and if you feel like you've got a job you need to understand that is the interviewer's job to make you feel good otherwise if they make you feel bad well you might end up complaining about their company right and they don't want that do not feel like you got a job before you got the contract and before you signed the contract first thing is that you need to actually get some sort of interview in order for you to get some sort of interviews you need to have a resume what you should do with your resume is the following you need to create a few applications. Don't create a portfolio because that's bullshit. Only juniors have a portfolio and you don't want to be a junior. You want to be a professional from the get go. So build a few applications and then link them in your resume and talk about the problem that each application has solved, how you solved it and what kind of technologies have you been using to solve those problems in your application. Now that you have that resume done, I mean, you can use services like on Fiverr to get you a nicely written resume. You can use ChatGPT. There are so many resources out there. The idea is that you need to try finding some sort of resume that works, okay? I have used many of these services and uh, we have a resume that has been, you know, prepared based on the experience of my students. There is no magic trick. I think you should A, B test different resumes. So the resume that we're using today is very different than the one we used last year, okay? so. Just keep that in mind as you're going through this. If you have like a cookie cutter resume, that's not gonna help you at all, okay? So get yourself a service that's gonna get you a nice resume, try a bunch of them, and then decide which one is the best, okay? Obviously the one that's gonna be the best is the one that's gonna get you the most interviews. Now, how do you apply? How do you get those interviews? How do you market yourself? Your resume is like your marketing tool. There are two ways, okay? Either mass apply, so this is a numbers game, apply to as many jobs as possible, 10, 20, 30, 100, 1000 jobs per day, and you shouldn't care at all. If that is discouraging you, I can understand. And you can use different services that can automate this job application part for you. I saw one, it's called lazyapply.com. So you pay like 200 bucks and then uh, there's that's like a Chrome extension that's gonna apply for you on Indeed or on LinkedIn. I think you should get it. I recommend it to my students. Or you can pay someone from Fiverr, like five bucks an hour to apply for you, okay? So that's a numbers game and you should do it. Even though you feel like the market is saturated and whatnot, that's an opportunity that you need to 
take advantage of no matter if you think it works or not. Then you have networking and networking is interesting because it requires a lot of energy from you. The more you do it, the better you get at it. You can get in touch with recruiters, hiring managers and other software developers. The way you approach hiring managers and recruiters versus software developers is very different. With hiring managers and recruiters, you can be a bit more direct and tell them, hey, I saw that you have this position open. What kind of candidate are you looking for? Just try to start a conversation with software developers. You can stroke their ego, you can look them up on GitHub. Maybe they have a portfolio, I doubt it, but if they have, maybe comment on that. Maybe comment on the projects that they are currently working on at their company, if you find the opportunity, but you need to think. At some point, you're gonna get interviews and you need to prep for these interviews. I don't recommend you to apply to Amazon, Facebook. I don't recommend you to apply to them because you don't have a computer science degree and even if you'd have one, you'd have to be graduating from a very important school to be taken in consideration by those companies. I would take that off of the table for you and I would look for small and medium-sized companies. And these companies will typically ask you very basic algorithmic questions. So you can go on Code Wars and practice level eight and level seven. For example, you should practice your JavaScript trivia and React questions. So you should know the ins and outs of the language and the library that you are applying with, you know, in your tech stack. And you should be ready to build some take home projects like a basic to do app. It can be either in your library of choice or in JavaScript you should expect to do that and you should be prepared for it. In my coaching program, we are having a live interview call every week. Okay, so then if you decide to join, you'll have nine months of interview prep. That's more than what most people have anyway. As that, you should prepare for these questions beforehand and you shouldn't leave it for last minute because you need time to understand these concepts, to memorize them and so on and so forth. Just being upfront with you is not going to be a quick thing if that's what you were expecting. When you'll start getting interviews, the first thing that you will do is you'll stop um, applying. So that's the biggest mistake. You will build some momentum with your applications and then let's say you are applying for four weeks straight and you are getting no after no after no and then you finally get an interview scheduled on your calendar. And the interview that you got from here is the one that came from an application that, put, that you put in your first week. Right? That's how you have to think about it. So you do something now and then in four weeks you'll see the results. Now, if you stop applying, you'll not get another interview up until four weeks after because you stop applying, you stop prospecting. You need to think like a business. Like for example, I don't even have spaces for my mentorship program, but I still promote it no matter if I have spaces or not. Why? Because I keep doing what I have to do all the time. Even if you have interviews, even if you have a job, you should keep interviewing forever. Okay, that's what I did in my first job. The moment I got my first dev job, I was already looking for another job. Yeah, I wanted to be sharp. I wanted to be able to interview. I wanted to be more confident. In order for me to become more confident, I have to apply more, interview more. How do you get better at something? You do it more. My last tip for you to never stop coding. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's imagine you are a developer right now. And let's imagine you are looking for a new job. What do you do? You code eight hours a day, then you prospect, you are applying or recruiters call you and whatnot. You are also interviewing, right, actively. And then you are also uh, prepping for those interviews. At the same time, you are still coding because you have a full-time job. Now, what most people do is they build up their skills to a certain level. They are not that great, let's just be honest. This happens a lot with bootcamp grads. <sighs> it, it pisses me off when I hear this, but they build some cookie cutter app with a login, with a sign up, with a basic Node.js server, with the most basic thing. And then they go into the interview mode. They stop coding. After six, nine, 12 months, they have zero interviews because their portfolios suck. And they also forget how to code. So then if they eventually get an interview, they have nothing to talk about and people will be like, what did you do for the past nine months? You said you love coding and you have built nothing. You're a liar and you lost your skills. So I highly encourage you to find a way to keep coding, maybe reduce coding instead of being like 100% of your time allocation per day should go to 20%, let's say. Then 20% is going to be prospecting, then 40%, you know, interview prep and whatnot. Okay, and then you can switch those percentages. You don't need to be 100% in all of them, but be aware of, you know, 
what's happening and then adjust those percent percentages so they can fit your life and lifestyle so you can make this a, something that is part of your lifestyle okay something that can be dragged for a very long period of time in this day and age everything is difficult every single thing that's gonna pay you money is very difficult apart from mcdonald's wendy's and whatnot starbucks every single thing that pays you good money and has the opportunity to provide you with a great lifestyle it's very tough to get in and it's very tough to stay in and it's very tough to progress that need for people is still gonna be there right and there will be less people because the goalpost is always moving like every industry becomes more complicated and more sophisticated every single year but in the same time you have more resources than ever to get to the outcome that you actually want so I highly encourage you to be proactive and look for ways to get better in, instead of looking for ways to complain about things. Because if you complain about things, that's not gonna help you in any way. Be emotionless, don't care about the negative outcomes, don't let them affect you, understand them. Try to understand the feedback, even if there is no feedback. If you're interested in coaching, that's the first link in the description. If you wanna check out the program, that's the second link in the description. You can see our live calls, you can see our interview prep. There are so many hours of content for you there. If you just follow that and watch it instead of Netflix, you'll learn so much. And if you wanna be part of those, if you wanna get my help with this whole process and you want me to make it as smooth as possible for you so you don't waste your time doing random bullshit, then apply for a free consultation call. That's the first link in the description. I'll see you in the next one, bye-bye.